Oriana is not popular in this particular series. So there smart call there. Look at you. You're the color caster now. Yeah, he's gonna walk in with the brush, however. Haru jumps forward. He can take that dredge line out. Just gonna flash away instead. We couldn't see for sure. Some players do go two into Riptide, so the flash probably suggests they didn't have access to the Q that time. If it was waiting for him to stand next to a wall for the flash heroic charge, but so far Marin hasn't responded with it. Well, dredge line comes through. That's going to be the opening here. Now Marin has no way of getting out. Red buff's not there from Haru, but it does not matter. This will almost certainly still be that first blood coming through. Eventually, one more hit. There we go. Haru picks it up. It was such a waiting game. In the end, the Q going out was enough to guarantee the kill on Marin with no flash. Regardless, we'll ignore that for now. Oh boy, there's Verdict coming through. Marin gonna throw out that depth charge. Gonna stop him from using that dredge line, but he saves it for the end. He'll be able to make his way out safely. Pretty greedy, no Merc treads. You know, some other mid laners would consider going Boots and the Null Magic Mantle. He's still dealing with the Cassio, but trusting for the Catalyst to be enough Oh, spot. down bot. Yeah, we're gonna have to get a replay of this one to see. I mean, I think we can kind of guess how things transpired. Haru comes in. Takes out Tucson, they follow up with another one swiftly onto Kramer. Two kills picked up by Samsung. Nicely done in the bottom lane. I'm guessing this started with the Abyssal Voyage and then maybe followed up with Throw of the Hunt, but not sure when those cooldowns were used or measured out. Nice stuff here, so we're gonna see the replay. And wow, it's actually in the Throw of the Hunt. Yeah. The Abyssal Voyage comes in. Did mean that he would have a leap available to him the moment that he came through. First time I've seen that interaction, but certainly very successful. Lots of hard engage from Samsung in the bot lane. Things are looking really good here for Samsung as they finish knocking down this first turret. TP will be committed here by Marn into the bottom lane. Going to be matched by Cubay, but it's going to be a bit later. First verdict avail is available. He wants to try to eject somebody. Throws it out. Won't find anybody. Just a couple minions. Devourer was keeping Stitch alive, but now the dredge line comes through onto Haro. He jumps back in, just trying to trade some damage for his life, but won't get much. Crown arriving, but might just have to be the peel back from both teams. Spirit splitting in mid, getting some damage down onto that tier one turret. Looks like Ooh. that's gonna be it. Big hit comes through on Koro, but they can't follow up for the kill. Yuve all in his lonesome down bot. A lot of wave clear on the poppy. Yeah, it just has the Q to rely on. But now the wraparound coming Watch through. The Crown. Realm Warp. Realm Warp's available, as is the Abyssal Voyage. You can just drag everybody in right now. Realm Warp popped. Gonna bait them out. Crown will go in by himself. Now cut off, but it doesn't matter. The rest of Samsung is here on top of the Afrika Freaks. Wild Growth used on top of Tucson himself. Haru goes over the wall, trying to get on top of Marn. Crown comes in with a flash, locks him down, takes him out with the overload. One picked up for Samsung. Can they get more? Afrika are poking around, trying to contest the Grom. They will be able to take that away, but it looks like that's going to be the end of the, of the engage. Oh. Well, that wasn't good. Koro walked into Control Ward, looked for a pick, but not to find one on Poppy. The late game will be really interesting, because as you say, we have to draw parallels to... Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Coral comes up with that double petrifying gaze. Exhaust comes down onto him, but the damage has been done. Poor JJ and Haru down to about half HP. Who's chasing who? Rift Herald is just one of those things where you just almost never see fights over it. If not, it, even engage. Engage, but speaking of engagements, Marn coming in with a TP. He's not fast enough to get in range for a dredge line. But it's going to be a Freaka. We're trying to get set up for this... Dragon here, flash away from by Kramer, keeps him out of range of that Astro, not getting hit yet. At least the Dragon, risky. They do have a bit of consistent damage here from the Cassio. Watch Rise on the back side. HP. Haru coming in, he's already thrown out. Go ahead, they eject the Cassio Bia, but that's gonna be Dragon going over to Spirit all the same. Marin taking up this damage in the front line. Gonna get wild growth for even more HP. We'll see, can they find a re-engagement? Dredge line not gonna connect. Like both teams will just go ahead and go their separate ways. In the disarray, a big rise combo wasn't to be found in this game. They're threatening a dive. Oh, Coral flashing in, trying to get that petrifying gaze down. Only finds slows on a crown and stitch, but they do get a lot of damage down on a Cube. He'll come out from the ash, trying to keep the poppy alive. Or JJ has to pop that gray health and flash respectively. Missile voyage up to the top side. Haru and Joe jumps in onto Coral. Petrifying gaze catches for JJ, so we can't follow up with the devour, but they jump forward. And the Wild Growth won't do enough. He goes down. Haru claims the kill. Now, can they get out? Looks like the pinch is not going to come through from the rest of Afrika. They'll go ahead and peel back. And Cube pushing really far forward. Kuro's coming around the sidelines. Red line to draw him in. Keeper's Verdict comes out. Oh, right between the two. Petrifying Gaze Very to lock nice. him up. That's going to be a dead poppy. Kill goes over to Marin. With Flash Heal, Arcane Shift, and Lulu to help him out. Look at this aggression on the stitch. Oh, yes, it's going low. Has to pop the heal. Lateral damage won't take him out, but takes him dangerously low. 
Got to get rid of that Ash Arrow as well. TP coming through from Marn. They're just going to go ahead, force up onto this Tier 1 turret. The wave's not there, though. Giving over the TP advantage for the Ocean Drake is not exactly the best feeling in the world. This will go down. Bola's out of the fight. Spirit takes this out. Stun into the wall onto Spirit. Wild Growth comes through. He flashes away from the Bola. We'll take him out. Petrifying Gaze not going to catch anybody. Uh, Freaka will go ahead and be able to back away with that Ocean Drake. But now Samsung going to be looking for that Tier 1 in mid. They really want to make this map longer. Get more spots to look for a dive with Throw the Hunt. Rotate as they well. They're the on the Baron. Yeah, they go straight in for the Baron. They have vision control here. Marn can't Recall be there. came through from Mar, and he's going to be sprinting his way back in through Shot Barrage. Will reveal it, but they take it out. Smite comes through. Flash away from Kramer as he gets locked up by the Ash Arrow. Nicely done by Samsung. Excellent shot calling. Yep. Do you want to help out the rest of your team and potentially lose that inhib turret, or do you just want to sit here and wave clear endlessly against Crown? Looks like it's going to be the latter. Kramer is joining up in the top lane. Is that build water colors? But this is the Abyssal Voyage coming through. QV in tow with Court JJ. They arrive. Dredge Line connects in onto the Poppy. Still pretty tanky, though. As they try to kite back, Asher will not connect from Stitch. Toss that one out from inside the jungle. Looks like that might just be the end of the scuffle. But meanwhile, Haru. Got the minions moving up into the bottom lane. He should be able to take out that inner turret. And we have that history lesson. Think back to game one where Freaker got everything pushed except for the bases. Once again, Kramer turns on Stitch and forces the Devour. But closing this game, once they start hitting turrets, it's going to be difficult. Oh, they're looking for Haru. Grab back in, flash forward into the line. Won't connect for JJ here to back him up. Devour is back off cooldown. Comes him up, spits him out. Haru is safe. You can see the frustration on Spirit. He's actually not had a kill involvement in this game. 33 minutes in, so zero, zero, kills. zero. Like you say, only been two kills, but that's why we saw the kind of angsty flash and ult, hoping to get one on the board. How much do they want Core JJ? Well, yeah, they get the flash. He gets the flash away, so nicely done. Can't flash in for a Devour to save somebody. Dragon gets started up and leashed out by Afrika. Scrying it. Ward comes down, Haru on the backside won't we'll be there for the steal. He just wants to get the assassination, jumps onto Kramer in the back line. Redemption pops him back up, so he's relatively healthy for now. But Flying Gaze won't find anybody with the dredge line. Connects it onto Cubay, dragging him back in. Devour comes through from Core. JJ just trying to keep him alive for a bit longer. Now jumping over onto Crown, trying to kite his way out of the fight. Won't be able to do so. Spirit comes up with a kill, and Cubay is almost certainly going to go down. There it is. One last Mystic Shot. Takes him out. Infernal Drake plus two to a Freak of Freak. Super cool fight. It looks like Samson will be the big winners coming in on multiple flanks. Uh. But this Afrika team fighting comp is very, very powerful. If Cassiopeia and Ezreal stay together, peel for each other, specifically holding onto the Petrifying Gaze to buy space for the Ezreal. The turn after Haru's dive doesn't pick up a kill. After Ryze goes in, is massive from Afrika. Death time is already pretty long, and this time with even extra tools, team fighting is no walk in the park for Samsung Galaxy. Yeah, Mountain Drake plus Infernal. You can see Samsung, they just can't push up to try to clear out these waves. Ten that seconds on rise. The inhib line being broken by a Freak of Freaks. 35 and a half minutes. They're able to do it. It looked like it would work when Crane was DPSed out, but still Ezra, it would arcane shift out and then turn onto Samsung, who are overextended. It was a really cool fight. All core JJ. We get him overextended. Ash Arrow now comes through. Spirit getting locked up. It's going to be Keeper's Verdict. Ejects Tucson and Kramer out of the fight, but they're already on top of Stitch, and he goes down. Kuro coming up with the kill, and now Kube has to run for his life. Petrifying Gaze over the wall just to try to slow him up. He's still sprinting as fast as his little Yordle legs will take him. Should be able to make it out with his life, but that's going to be Stitch going down. A lot of the consistent damage from the side of Samsung has been eliminated. And you have to think that that will be Baron being started up by Afrika. Yeah, Samsung keep trying to come in front on. They don't have the capability to do so. So we see the turn on to Baron for Afrika Freaks. Got Core JJ pushing up the river. Everybody on Afrika relatively healthy. Snatch up comes through on the ground, but the Devourer is there to try to keep him alive. Cube might just have to die for his team, and he does. Realm Warp comes through right before the dredge line. We'll take them out to safety, but Baron goes over to the Afrika Freaks. Yeah, the front on doesn't work. You cannot run straight with your ults into a Freak of Freaks and expect to win a fight. No one can lock down the Ezreal, always out of range of Crown. The kite back has been super good, and they will lose their top lane inhibitor turret, so not everything is going exactly as you want. The minion waves were very well prepped by Samsung Galaxy, but maybe the next minion wave, they look for a big ultimate from Mara, and they want to brute force down the second inhibitor. 
Well, the hunt coming out. Haru looking to pitch from the sidelines, but the turn has been broken, and Freak of Freaks fearlessly shove inside the base and take out that second inhibitor. No latitude for Haru. There's no way for him to actually get in the fight. Red line connecting on the court. JJ Redemption coming down. A little bit of damage, and Haru jumps forward, but can't get much. Now Cube having to run the power comes out before JJ yet again. Stitch dead. Alive, but Stitch goes down, and this might just be the end of the game in favor of Afrika Spirit. Going forward fearlessly with a flash, trying to get some damage in. Almost goes down, does right at the end of that last turret shot, but that might not be enough to dissuade Afrika Freaks. Marin's still here, has that Guardian Angel up, still does not have it popped. Kramer has no mana though, this could be actually pretty tricky to close. I think it's smart for Afrika to back away. All right, looks like they will go ahead and do just that. They get the one Nexus turn, almost take out the second, can't quite finish it off. It's five minutes and they're certainly in the driver's seat to do so. They got everything they were looking for in that push, except for ending the game. You just see Samsung, they just don't really have an idea of how to win these fights. And they're not getting the sort of catches that they were able to in game And one. they're not here to try to stop this Elder Dragon from going down, despite the fact that Spirit was dead. That very well could have just been a smite take by Haru. Now Samsung need the God fight. They need to pull off something against the buffs, against the flow of the game, against the comps. Well, it's already a dredge line in on a stitch. He has to get devoured right off the bat. Tucson. Some damage in on tomorrow. Tucson gets jumped onto the back line. Has to use a wild growth onto himself. Yube going forward. Gets popped up immediately. Big petrifying gaze. Locks up court JJ and Stitch. They take out the Ash dredge line on the ground, forcing the flash away. But the members of Samsung are just dying all over the place. Kyube comes back up. The GA gets popped. Haru goes in, trying to assassinate this Edriel, but he just can't do it. Kramer goes forward to the Arcane Shift, finds himself a double kill. And with three members dead, effectively all five of them, because Crown and Kyube can't do a damn thing. That will be game number three. Going over to Afrika Freaks, 42 minutes on the clock. They come up with a win.